It's very striking that the festival of Sukkot tabernacles seems on the surface to be, well, the, the easiest Jewish holiday to understand along with Passover. After all, Passover well, celebrates, marks the moment that God redeemed the Jewish people from Egypt, from bondage, with great miracles. Sukkot, the festival of tabernacles, celebrates the journey that, in fact, as the children of Israel wandered through a wilderness for 40 years, the Almighty had a cloud that covered over the nation during the day and a pillar of fire that guided them by night. It was a miraculous existence as we moved through a wilderness and came to the Promised Land and crossed the Jordan opposite Jericho. These two festivals, understandably, are marked on the same day of the month, the 15th day of the month. Passover is marked on the 15th day of the first month, Nisan. And Sukkot, the Festival of Tabernacles, is marked on the 15th day of the seventh month, which we're in right now. Both of those days, the moon, the moon is full. The miracle is exposed for everyone to see. A national event, a national miracle, where entire people was delivered. It's not about a personal revelation, but rather a national revelation. But God redeemed an entire people from Egypt, as he had promised Abraham, going back to Genesis chapter 15, and then brought them through a wilderness for 40 years till they finally came to the Promised Land. All that makes a lot of sense. But there's a question here. The Bible tells us that in the Messianic age, all the nations will turn to the God of Israel. The knowledge of God will cover the world as the water covers the sea. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9. A massive repentance. All nations will set aside their implements of warfare and replace them with implements of agriculture. A nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn of war anymore. See the first four passages of Isaiah chapter 2. And as it turns out, we're told in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16, that all the nations that survive, meaning they're faithful, they've turned to the God of Israel, they will join the Jewish people and celebrate the festival of tabernacles. They'll f celebrate this festival of sitting in the sukkah. That's what the Bible said. And the question is, why? It's very striking that prior as a antecedent event to the coming of the Messiah, we're also told in Scripture that nations or a confederacy of nations will come to attack Jerusalem, will attack Israel. The Bible says that Jerusalem, where I'm standing right now, will be a heavy, burdensome stone to all the nations who come up against it. In those days, the Bible says, in Zechariah 12, verse 9, I will destroy all the nations that go to war against Jerusalem. But then God will preserve a remnant, because after all, they will repent, they'll turn to the God of Israel. The nations that come against Israel, the Bible tells us, are called Gog. Ezekiel chapter 38. It means a confederacy of nations led by Persia, meaning modern day Iran. See the first five passages of Ezekiel chapter 38. Will go to war against this. And that confederacy of nations that's outlined in, outlined in scripture is called Gog. And that's why very frequently this war is called the War of Gog and Magog. But what's Gog? What is that? What kind of a name is that? I've never heard of a country called Gog, have you? So it turns out there is no country called Gog, but rather the word Gog in Hebrew means a roof. The people who trust in the roof, made out of reinforced concrete, something very strong, something very material, who are very connected to this world, go to war against those who trust in 
not a reinforced concrete roof, but rather the clouds of heaven. Remember those clouds that guided the nation of Israel as they marched through a wilderness under the guidance and leadership of Moses? That's right. That's why the Bible tells us that Messiah will come. He'll come with the clouds of heaven. See Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. Why is he coming with clouds? To the ancient of days, why clouds? Because it's those who trust in the clouds of heaven rather than the roof. So essentially, the end time war is between two ideologies, those who trust in the physical, material world, those who trust in the roof, it's really the people of the roof, and they go to war against people who trust in basically the sukkah. The sukkah is really, the walls are not very strong at all. It's called a diras arai, a kind of a temporary dwelling. The roof on top of a sukkah is made out of just branches, just pieces of wood, disconnected from the ground. That's what's critical. You can't build a sukkah underneath the ceiling in your house. It has to be outdoors without trees overhead. You're not connected to the ground, but rather you're connected to heaven. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, we have a better idea of what God has in view here. At the end of days, enemies of Israel come to war. These are people who trust in the physical properties of this world, who trust in the roof, go to war against those who trust not in the roof, but rather the clouds of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God will destroy the enemies of Israel. And of course, we hope that so many of them will repent. And therefore, the nations that survive, who trust the clouds rather than the roof, they're going to celebrate the Festival of Tabernacles, as we mentioned in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. Look, we are living in extraordinary times right now. I'm standing about 60 miles just north of Gaza, and there's another war brewing in the north and another in the east, implacable enemies on all sides. This is the time now to think. Think about your relation with God. Who do you trust? Do you trust in the roof? Do you trust in the material world? Or do you trust in the God of Israel? If you do, we will celebrate Sukkot, the festival of tabernacles covered by a just little branches because we really trust in Him the creator of us all. Happy holiday.